Good Friday morning, Mount Olive family, friends of Mount Olive, all you who are uh, tuning in to watch another uh, devotion. Um, we hope you've had a good week so far as we wind it down. Uh, we pray that you know, you'll have a continued uh, good weekend. Looking forward to our Sunday service. We'll be having uh, a um, short service and then the picnic afterwards. So uh, we appreciate that for um, uh, kind of a dual uh, uh, event for us, uh, for us to get together. It's been a little while. And then also to uh, honor uh, Pastor TJ. It's Pastor Appreciation Month. So we just decided to, uh, to combine those two together. So uh, we hope to see you there on Sunday. But uh, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you uh, for this devotion. So I entitled uh, this um, devotion, Accepted uh, in the Beloved, that's uh, Ephesians 1.6, uh, part of the scripture that Pastor TJ uh, used in his service. I, I felt that, uh, and then I felt this little sign said, welcome to acceptance, enjoy the journey. And so, you know, after we are accepted by Jesus Christ into the family, of God, then uh, we can enjoy the journey because we have someone to, to go with us along the way. So let's look at uh, some of the scriptures that Pastor used on Sunday. He said, Ephesians 1, 5, and 6, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. <clears throat> and chapter, verse 6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath uh, made us accepted in the blood. Uh, and I underlined the, the word accepted. And that's the theme of mine is uh, everybody kind of picked out a word or a phrase, an ideal in that. And so I've chose accepted. Now, what does it mean to be accepted? Uh, I guess would be the first question. You know, we think of it in terms of a purchase. Uh, uh, like if we were buying a home, they would say, well, they accepted our offer for the house. Or if it was a college uh, application, uh, I was accepted by the university. Uh, so what does it mean to be accepted? We'll go in and do a, um, a Greek word study uh, here. Just one word this, this time. Now, the English word uh, accepted, the English definition says regard it favorably giving approval or acceptance. Now, the Greek word is karataho, karataho. That Greek definition means to endue with special honor, make accepted, be highly favored. You know, there's a big difference between those when we look at, you know, accepted uh, in, the, uh, in the English was just regarded favorably, given approval or acceptance. But in the in the Greek or in the in the Greek it says to endure with special honor, make accepted to be highly favored. I think I like the Greek uh, definition better than the English definition when it comes to that word. You know, Pastor T.J. said there was a time uh, uh, when we or and he and us uh, that we were estranged from God. Uh, we were separated from God. We were away from Him. Um, we were orphans because of our sin. Uh, we had no uh, connection with God. Uh, you know, we were separated, and uh, sin will do that. Sin will separate you from uh, from God and, and your friends and family. You know, and this reminded me of a young man who was estranged and separated and away from his father. Uh, and we find that in Luke 15, that when we see it, you'll remember what, what it is. Luke 15, 11 through 12, this is the parable about the prodigal son. And he said, uh, and it starts in verse 11. And he said, that being Jesus spoke to him in the, this parable. 
I mean, it could have been somebody that he knew, and he put it in the form of a parable. But so a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my of goods that follow to me. And the, he, being the father, divided unto them his living. You know, the younger son was being uh, very disrespectful to his father by asking for his inheritance. Uh, in essence, uh, the son was treating his father as if the father had already died or implying that he wished that his, his father was dead. So basically, the son was cutting all ties with his father. Uh, he got what he wanted. He was going to do, uh, go his own way and do what he wanted to do uh, with uh, no thought of his father at all. You know, we were like that at one time before we were saved. We wanted to do things our way and go where we wanted to go and act how we wanted to act with no regard sometimes for our earthly parents and definitely not our heavenly father. And the son, you know, he did that for a while. Then in verse 13, it says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. You know, the son, he wasted his time, he wasted his energy, he wasted his inheritance and had nothing to show for it. And then things got worse. You know, there's a, a, a saying that uh, many of you have heard, it says, sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. And we can say that about the young son, we can say that about some of us before we came to, uh, to Jesus Christ. Verse uh, 14, that says, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Uh, now he's wasting his health. You know, sin will take everything, including our health, uh, physically and emotionally, and it will try to destroy you spiritually when you have nowhere else to go uh, and you have no one to turn to. You only have one place to go. And that's back to the Father. Verse 17, the first part says, and when he came to himself. You know, those five little words that uh, changed uh, the son's life. And five little words that changed my life. And five little words that can change your life if you're still living in sin. When he came to himself and he realized what he had done and where he was at. Uh, you know, when we realized that, you know, we are away from God and we need uh, grace and we need mercy that uh, was given to his son, Jesus Christ, then, you know, we can, we can start uh, our, our journey back. The rest of the verse says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? You know, even the servants in the father's house had more than he had. So, uh, in verse 18, he, he says, I will arise and go to my father. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You know, there's no saying that confession is good for the soul. Uh, and the son knew he had done wrong and that he had sinned. He had taken his birthright uh, as a son and destroyed it. And by, by tradition, he was not worthy to be a son of the father any longer. <clears throat> you know, when we come to ourselves and we realize that we've sinned and we're away from God, you know, we need to go to, to God and ask him for forgiveness. That's the only choice that we have. Next verse in uh, verse uh, 20 says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a far way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. You know, this verse here could be a devotion in itself. It says, the son arose and came. You know, we have to put effort into our, um, uh, our turning from sin. You know, we have to turn from our sin and we have to come to Jesus. Uh, and that's what the father was going, the son was going back to the father. And then the verse, uh, it says that, uh, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. The father saw him. I, you know, I like to think that the father would look for his son every day 
hoping he would uh, he would come back home. You know, and God is looking for those who have sinned and uh, and he has sent the Holy Spirit to convict our heart of our need uh, to turn to God. You know, the verse said the father ran, not, not the son, the father. You know, in Middle Eastern culture, an older father would not run. It was considered un undignified uh, for him to do so. Uh, we know he was uh, probably wearing a long outer garment, a, a robe that would have covered his legs, and that would have made it hard for him to run. For him to run, he would have had to uh, had to reach down and grab the back of the uh, garment from between his legs and pulled it up between his legs and tucked it under his belt around his waist. Again, the father was breaking the culture of the time by showing his legs, which was a big no-no in that time. But the reason the father did is because he had compassion for his son. Like the father, God also has compassion on those who are lost. Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, even when we were in our sin, God was still concerned and, and he cared for us. And he sent Jesus Christ to be our, our way of escape. Second Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, that's probably one of my, my favorite verses uh, because uh, I'm glad that Jesus, that God was long suffering to me. And I'm sure you were glad that he was long suffering to you. Uh, you know, he kept, kept knocking, the Holy Spirit kept knocking on the door of, the, of my heart saying, you need Jesus, you need Jesus. You know, and I kept turning him away, but he was long suffering and, and I'm thankful for that. So back to Luke, uh, Luke 21 through 24 says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy, thy son. You know, confession is a first step toward repentance and, uh, and forgiveness. Verse 22 says, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put, on, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Here, the father is bringing the son back into the family fold and giving him back his birthright as his son. You know, God does the same for us when we are, uh, when we ask him to forgive us of our sins. We are no longer outcasts and aliens, but we're sons and daughters and join ours with Christ. Verse 23 says, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Verse 24 says, for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. You know, we were dead in our sin. Uh, we were lost. Um, and, but, you know, now when you're saved, you can say that you are alive in Christ and you're found in him. So we'll go back to that uh, accepted in the beloved. Uh, just a few more verses here. We'll go. We'll go on with those. Uh, now we're back into Ephesians again, but the second chapter, uh, four through six. It says, "For God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved." Verse 6 says, and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. You know, no matter who you are, no matter wh where you've been, no matter what you've said, no matter what you've done, God is ready and willing to accept you uh, just as you are uh, because um, you are accepted. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this devotion. Uh, if you uh, are listening and you are not uh, accepted if you're still in your sins all you have to do is ask jesus christ to end your heart you can bow wherever you are and say 
you know, Lord, I, I, you know, I've, I've sinned. I, I, I confess that. Uh, I believe that you came and died for those sins. Uh, I believe that you uh, rose on the third day victorious over uh, death, hell, and the grave. And I accept you as my personal savior. You know, if you do that, uh, you can uh, uh, you can be saved. And if you did, uh, let Brother TJ know, and we'll baptize you the next time we have a baptism. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Uh, I pray that each one of you be uh, be uh, much in prayer for uh, Cooper Carlson, uh, you know, the young young man who's down at St. Jude's and his family. I pray that you be much in prayer for uh, all those who will be at church Sunday, that if any are there that are lost, that they will see their need for a Savior. Uh, have a good rest of the week.